Hey guys, I bet when you think of BMW, that's what you're thinking about. The M5, the M3, the ultimate driving machine. But did you know that BMWs can be good off-road? And to prove it, in this video, I'm gonna take this brand new BMW X5 on this course that BMW has set up to find out if it is indeed an off-road machine or just the ultimate on-road machine. And that is coming up right now. The first test will be articulation. Let's see how much play the suspension has. The second test will be approach and departure, critical when off-roading. The third test will be visibility. I think that'll help a lot, front-facing camera. And the fourth test will be water fording. So let's hit this course and see just how good this BMW is when the road gets a little dirty and dusty. All right, let's run this course and try the different tests. Now, keep in mind that there are two engine choices. There's the straight six, which is what we have. There's also a V8. This is the 40i. And it's not about power, really, when going off-road. So it doesn't really matter which engine you have, as long as you have enough torque to actually get over these obstacles. So this is the one that basically tests articulation and traction and grip. Now, a lot of off-roaders, and I'm going to turn this off. That is the parking assist because it's a little um, annoying. A lot of off-roaders will have locking differentials, a low transfer case to make the power multiplied when it gets down to the wheels. This one doesn't have it. Or this uses an electronic stability control system to break the wheel that doesn't have traction, sending power to the wheel that has traction. So it's an electronic form of advanced off-roading traction control. Uh, this BMW does have X drive, which means that it can appropriate power front and backwards. And having just gone over that first articulation section, it did fine. Obviously, if you could lock the rear diff, if you could put it into low gear, you'd be better off off-road. But nevertheless, for this kind of off-roading, this X5 is just fine. Perhaps the most important factor about going off-road seems silly, but it's right here. It's the tire. These are 275, 45. 20s they're Pirelli Scorpions which is an all-season tire that's very popular with a lot of the German brands you'll see them on cars like Volvos and they're relatively good in the light off-road area but the grip obviously isn't there I think if you wanted to turn this into something more than just a light off-roader you would have to upgrade these tires to something like an all-terrain tire like a KO2. The other thing about off-roading, of course, is that things get damaged. Expensive things get damaged. And that's why many people won't take expensive vehicles off-road because they're expensive to repair. And in the case of the BMW, I, I certainly think that's one of those criteria that people will use and have used to take this off-road. And let's face it, you don't see a lot of BMW X5s in Moab, it's just not a vehicle designed for that purpose. But nevertheless, it can do it. And I'm hoping that I can prove that here on this BMW off-road course. And to show you guys that if you do have a BMW or you're thinking about buying one, it's actually not bad off-road. Now, the next test is approach and departure angles. So let's stop right here and let's check this one's out. There are three numbers that determine how good a vehicle is off-road and those numbers are the approach angle, the departure angle, and the breakover angle. In other words, how big of a barrier can you pull up to and hopefully cross over without hitting? And the BMW luckily has air suspension which means I can raise and lower the vehicle. Right now the vehicle is in its lowest setting which is pretty miserable for off-roading but with a flick of a little switch, I could raise this vehicle up and give me a much better approach and departure angle. So let's do that and show them exactly how much difference there is in approach and departure from its lowest position, which is where I have it at now, to its highest position. All right, now that the X5 is on its tippy toes, I've got a better approach, departure, breakover angle. 
and I can go up this hill and I can demonstrate the third thing that this vehicle does well and that is sight because it does have a full 360 degree camera allowing me to actually see over the top of that hill because when I'm driving and going up that hill all I see is sky and I don't know what is on the other side of that and if this was the BMW course if we were in let's say Moab there could be nothing but a 20 foot drop but this way I can at least see so let's see how good this camera is so I'm gonna turn on the front facing camera and one of the cool things that I can do now is I can see what's over the hill because if I'm looking straight ahead I don't see anything but sky, but in the camera, I can actually see what's in front of me. So I know that there is no 20 foot drop off straight ahead of me. So when I crest the top of this hill, I'm confident in knowing that I will not go plunging to a fiery death and wreck a very expensive new BMW X5 in the process. And obviously cameras are something that now all vehicles have both on and off road, but this one is relatively high definition and it, seems to do a really good job in kind of telling me what is ahead of me uh, and I love front-facing cameras when off-roading I think it's one of the uh, new wonders of the off-road world because let's face it the visibility out of this bad boy isn't ideal all right we've come to the next part which is chassis rigidity so let's check that out a good test of a car's ability to be both good on-road and off-road is chassis rigidity. I mean, you want a chassis to be rigid so that you can hang the suspension off of it. So this is a bit of a teeter-totter that they set up here with the X5, but let's just see how rigid it is. The question is, can I open the door without it binding? Yeah, answer is yes. That chassis is very rigid because if it was twisting, that door would bind and not open. Full disclosure, BMW flew me out here to test drive this new X5 and a whole bunch of other vehicles. More full disclosure, my wife actually used to own an X5, so I'm very familiar with the breed and the brand. And I gotta tell you, style-wise, there's no mistaking this for anything else but an X5. But there is one big change in the new X5, and I know you guys know what it is. It's right here. It's this... Uh, XL, or maybe it's double XL front grille. That is the new design language of BMW, and love it or hate it, big grills are in. And if you want a BMW, you're gonna be rocking a double XL front nose. It's pretty much classic BMW inside the X5. You've got this new BMW digital dash, You've got a very big display here. You've got this funky BMW gear selector. I've never fallen in love with this. You've got a whole bunch of different controls that are both physical buttons or rotary knob associated ones or if you're really feeling funky you've got the gesture controls. Could be rocking some tunes right now. So how accommodating is this X5 for all you want to be or real overlanders? I mean if you want to go overlanding you need a lot of space for you, your friends, and your stuff. So back here, I'm 6'2". I've got plenty of headroom, even with this massive sunroof that stretches all the way back. I've got plenty of knee room. I could see five people in relative comfort in the back of the X5. How about all your stuff? You know, water, batteries, tents, water purifiers. Let's see how much room there is. Very generous, look at that. There is a lot of space back here. We've got two big backpacks, and I love this, check it out. This dual split gate is actually really great for off-roading and overlanding. I don't know if you noticed it, but uh, the BMW just lowered itself. Right, look how far down it squats so that you and your pets can get into the back of the thing. I mean, that's incredible. It's just uh, really thoughtful that you can lower it so much and then raise it when you want to go off-road. Of course, the one thing about air suspension is uh, it's probably not the suspension you want if you're gonna keep this car forever. And for our final test, we're gonna get a little wet and wild. There's a part of me that really wants to fly through this water crossing. The issue is it's kind of artificial and if I do that, I think I would uh, empty out the water <laughs> for everybody else that's out here actually testing these cars. So uh, the BMW guys have told me that I must stick to a very strict three miles an hour going through the Vasa. So I will do that in respect of BMW, but oh, 
there's part of me that just wants to come flying through here and get that classic off-road shot of water just flying everywhere. How much water fording does this BMW X5 have? Well, if you have to ask, you're probably in the wrong vehicle. In other words, this is not the vehicle to go across. Hello? I didn't ask you for help. Please be quiet. No, I don't want to talk to you. Cancel. Could you repeat that? Cancel. Cancel. This is probably not the vehicle that you'd want to take across deepest, darkest uh, Borneo, uh, across multiple rivers. So the question I started out with at the beginning of this X5 off-road review is, is this the ultimate off-road machine as well as on-road machine? And I think we've got our answer. In other words, is it as good as the Land Rover or Range Rover off-road? And the answer is no, it's not that good. The Range Rover and Land Rover, maybe even the Jeep Grand Cherokee have a heritage of going off-road. This of course has a heritage of on-road driving, but if you happen to have a cabin in the woods, and it gets a little dusty and muddy, you shouldn't have any problems. Or if you're in the mountains and you hit a snowstorm or two, this car will do just fine. So keep in mind that if you do want to go seriously off-road, maybe, and you want to stick to German cars, a G-Wagon, as always, this is Roman reporting for the Fast Lane Car. Check out tflcar.com for more news, views, and of course, BMW X5 off-road reviews. Ian, you know, we're the only ones out here taking the X5 off-road. What is up with that? Everybody's out there on the race course. Go figure. <laughs>